Hey everyone, ever since I unboxed my G5 on YouTube, I have had loads and loads of questions about it. Asking about performance, um, what kind of upgrades are you going to do, stuff like that. So I'm going to do probably two or three videos, um, hopefully two or three anyway, um, explaining all about the G5 and uh, its performance, how it stacks up against the MacBook, uh, what am I missing out if I'm using PowerPC instead of Intel? Stuff like that. So um, this particular video is going to be a hardware tour, and I will take you through every last inch of this machine. Um, but let's settle one matter here. I know from my previous two Power Mac G5 videos, um, PowerPC is going to pop up in the comment section somewhere. Guys, PowerPC does not bother me. Technically, this machine is still supported. It's still uh, classed as a supported Mac. It obviously isn't going to be supported for long, but that doesn't make a difference anyway. Um, there are still great apps out there that run on PowerPC. People are saying, oh, the new versions won't run on PowerPC. There's nothing wrong with the old versions, guys. They still perform brilliantly. And uh, I can run the latest version of File Cut Express. I can run Photoshop CS4 on this machine. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's, it's brilliant. And Leopard is still a current and brilliant OS. I mean, loads of people are still using Leopard. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I really like it. I got Snow Leopard on my MacBook, and to be honest, there isn't that much of a difference. Um, there's just the odd little thing. But anyway, I'm not here to get into the Intel versus PowerPC arguments. I'm here today to show you my Mac. And this is a Power Mac G5, 2004 model. So it's the AGP graphics with uh, dual processors instead of dual core processors. So that means there's two processors in this machine. Um, they're both running at 2.5 gigahertz. So yes, this is the liquid cooled model. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take you through um, everything on this Power Mac. So starting at the front, you can see we have the handle at the top. And we have this uh, mesh design. People call it the cheese grater. Very, very nice. It's to um, get as much air into this machine as possible. You can see um, three intake fans in the front of this uh, machine. Here we have the slot for the super drive. If we slide that down, you can see the super drive in there. Very convenient, uh, very elegant and cool as well. Here we have the front panel with our power button. Uh, the power light is also above that, I believe, that little dot there. Um, headphone jack, USB 2.0 port, and FireWire 400. Obviously, you can see the bottom foot on the floor that looks exactly like the handle. If we flip around then, you can see that there's nothing much on this side, just a gorgeous Apple logo, which is very, very large. Um, it's all one piece of aluminium, which is really nice, curving up here and everything. Really, really nice design, I love it. It's basically exactly like a Mac Pro. Until you get to the back. This is where it's different to a Mac Pro. I mean, the front's a little different on the Mac Pro as well, but the back is even more different. Um, unlike the Mac Pro, which has its power supply at the top, the G5 has it at the bottom. As you can see, the power connector is there. But uh, we'll get onto that when we look on the inside of the machine anyway. So here you can see more cheese grated design with some exhaust fans here. We have two fans. Mac Pro has one fan. This has two. Um, you can see the uh, latch to open the door. So you just flip it up and the door comes off. And push it down to secure the door in place. Very uh, easy design. Here you can see I've got an Ethernet controller card. Um... A fiber channel card that's got two fiber channel ports on it. Guys, I am going to be selling this and putting either a USB 2.0 card or an eSATA card in there because fiber channel, I don't use it. And these two here are my graphics card. Um, yeah, my graphics card's huge. You'll see what it is in a minute. But um, we have dual link DVI and dual link DVI. So it has dual, dual link. And then this slot is taken up to screw the graphics card in as well. Coming down to the ports then, we have our airport antenna port airport antenna kind of connection thing. Um, I don't have it in there, um, but I do have the Bluetooth one below it. This is the Bluetooth antenna that you need to get Bluetooth um, on this Mac. I don't have an airport card in here or anything, so yeah, that's why I don't have the antenna. Um, here you have optical audio in and out, analog audio in and out, uh, two USB 2.0 ports, FireWire 400, FireWire 800, Ethernet, and 56K uh, modem. So yeah, that's the back of the machine. Very, very nice. Let's flip it around then and get to the good stuff. Okay, so let's undo that latch I was talking about. This is basically exactly like the Mac Pro. 
um, the way that you take the door off. And the door just comes off like that. Very, very nice. It's just one solid piece of aluminium and it, it's pretty, pretty damn heavy. And there you can see the inside of the G5. Now the G5, unlike the Mac Pro, um, has this um, sort of uh, air baffle thing to help with the um, the airflow inside. It's very, very nice. And the cool thing about the G5 is if you take off the aluminium door but leave this on, like so, the G5 will still run like that, which is sweet. But there's sensors um, that if you take this off like that, the G5 will shut down. So that's really cool. This helps with the cooling. So let's put that down there as well. And let me take you through all the components in the G5. So that's the overall view of it. Here we have the super drive. I hope to upgrade to um, a faster one soon, but uh, this one's doing me fine at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. You can see there's a, a fan back there. I think there's nine fans in this machine in total. I'm not sure. Um, there you can see we have two SATA hard drives. That's a nice thing about this Power Mac compared to the G4s. It uses SATA hard drives um, out of the box, really. Um, you can see you can fit two hard drives in here, and uh, they're both full. Um, 250 gigs apiece, 32 megs of cache. Uh, they're SATA drives, 7200 RPM. Pretty average drives. Um, I hope to pull both of them out and um, replace them with two one terabyte Western Digital Greens with uh, 64 megs of cache. But uh, that's for upgrades in the future. They're both about half full at the moment. So um, I have about 250 gigs of space remaining because you obviously get about 500 in total. But anyway, um, coming along here then, you can see I have um, a fan there. This is um, intake from the front to blow over the graphics card and PCI slots. Um, you can see the top PCI slot in there. We have the Ethernet card. There's the fiber channel card. And here's my graphics card. It's the NVIDIA G4 6800 Ultra DDL. Very, very nice card. It's one of the best you could get at the time for the AGP Power Max. Um, the DDL stands for Dual Dual Link. It's got 256 DDR3 graphics memory um, on board. Uh, I can't remember the clock speed of the GPU off the top of my head, but it's a very, very nice card. Um, it's massive. And uh, I believe it was the first card that could drive the 30-inch uh, cinema display, which is... Uh, a pretty cool fact. Coming down here then you can see um, you can just see my hand through the front of the computer that's how many holes is in this thing. Um, there's more intake fans there for the uh, CPUs. You can see four slots of RAM there and four slots of RAM up there as well and here we have um, the processors. There's two processors, pro two processors in this machine like I said before uh, 2.5 gigahertz uh, this is the liquid cooled model, so there is a liquid pump in here somewhere, along with two um, exhaust fans, which you can see around the back there. If we pull out this intake fan assembly then, which just slides out, like so, there it is, you will be able to get a closer view of the, um, of the RAM. If I lie down here, you can see the RAM in there. Now it's all full, they're 512 megs each, I hope to replace every single one of them with uh, one gigabyte sticks eventually, um, to bring this machine up to 8 gigs of RAM. You can see then, there's the filter for the processor. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's a big, beastly box where the processors are sitting, which is pretty sweet, and I love this design with G5 written there. And then along the bottom of the machine, we have the power supply. You can see that the power connector is at the back there, and then the bottom of the machine is the power supply, which is really cool design. So yeah, that's the uh, Power Mac G5, guys. Very, very nice machine. Um, it's very stable. And if you're wondering about performance, I know I'm going to get comments, you know, it's got pretty nice spec or whatever, how does it perform? Um, I will be doing performance videos comparing it to my MacBook and um, generally um, G5 benchmarks and whatever. But uh, yeah, very nice machine. I'm very pleased with it. If you're interested in buying one of these, it'll cost you somewhere around the £500 mark, which is a steal in my opinion. I know you could get an Intel Mac Mini for around the same price, but uh, it hasn't got the same upgradability as this Mac. But anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.